this afternoon's program. Frank Warren presents a cruiserweight contest sponsored by Croxley Script over 12 three-minute rounds for the vacant cruiserweight championship of Great Britain. Presenting and introducing in this corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Battersea, TJ. And from Hitchin, ladies and gentlemen, Andy Strong. At the weigh-in at one o'clock today, Jay scaled 13 stones, seven pounds, strong 13 stones, five and a half pounds. The referee for this contest, Mr. Sid Nathan, timekeeper, Mr. Tom Rice. Cruiserweight Championship then, the 13 stone 8 division and uh, the gold trunked Andy Strong has got a lot of support as you would expect because a popular lad in Hertfordshire, played cricket for one of the better teams around here and although he's been a flatmate with Errol Christie for some time, he's now moved back to Letworth. So TJ, really a tough character I promise you, saw him in the Los Angeles Olympics but unfortunately got drawn against Evander Holyfield and was beaten and Holyfield is the first of the American Olympians to win a professional world championship a real tough nut originally from Ghana but now billed as of Battersea well it's been a long time coming for Andy Storm after three ABA championships at the Mike Heavyweight and you're wondering just what he's up against here. Taju Ake is the correct name of the Ghanaian, but uh, he's now boxing with TJ, which makes it a lot easier for commentators. And the referee, experienced, of course, Sid Nathan, originally London, and uh, even he emigrated to Hertfordshire. So it's very much a bit of a local fight. Sean's got a nice loose style, Jim, but uh, Jay, I tell you, is a, is a tough egg, isn't he? Yeah, well, sometimes I feel that with Strong, he's a little bit too casual in his approach, but I think he's, he's been psyched up this afternoon, all right. It's been a good start, no clinching, no holding, and they're getting right down to action straight away. Just put a title tag to a fight makes a big difference, it really does. And it's a division that's been uh, introduced now at world level, by the way. Different varying weights. One is 13-13 after the 13-8. It used to be almost a heavyweight uh, division. Remember Henry Cooper, that was his best fighting weight, 13-8. Len Harvey, people like that. So 13-7, TJ. 13-5 and a half scores. He did most of his early professional boxing at the light heavyweight, 12-7. Throws those Jays, I'll tell you, there's some bombs in, in those. He uh, used to box for the London All Stars Club out of Paddington. And uh, for a while, he, he really became the chairman of the Who Needs Him clubs by uh, other club matchmakers. Uh, certainly good support there mainly uh, as you would expect for Andy Storm but TJ's brought quite a few people in too from the old All-Stars supporters there he is with the manager Tony Lavelle and in fact his father working in the corner there uh, who's a coach at the, the London club Andy Storm with the old firm of Ernie Fossey and Brian Waters he born in Barbados, but uh, lived in Hitchin at a very young age and boxed for Britain in the Moscow Olympics. Perhaps a little bit too early for him. He was stopped by a Russian there, which not surprisingly, really. But he boxed on the Dennis Andrews and Tony Sibson bill 
and uh, that was his last contest when he won on points against Pact Strachan. Second out, round two. Into the second round then of this championship fight. And he looks a bit dangerous, although uh, Andy Strong in fact was the bowler of these two. The man who's bowling the punches at the moment is Jay. Southern area champion now, Jay. Doesn't take long to win that. He's only had four fights and drawn one four and drawn one and stopped two of those. But a lot to do with that is difficulty in getting opposition. And also, stablemate held this championship, Sammy Reeson, who's now given it up to challenge for the European. Also needs to be a bit naughty, Jim, if he hangs his chin out strong. Yeah, and that last left hook that just landed gave Strong a little bit of trouble. I think uh, being a 12-rounder, Strong could maybe afford to be a little bit careful in the opening rounds. Uh, just let TJ get rid of some of, some of his steam. He's certainly looking dangerous. Strange enough, Jim, uh, they're not Af African fighters are not really great at uh, this weight from sort of middle weight upwards. You only get the odd one comes along, don't you? Because this fellow, uh, TJ, is a bit tasty, as they say in the game. Yeah, well, as I say, he's looking very dangerous. He, some of his punches are a bit crude, but uh, when they land, there's plenty of power behind them. Swinging a prayer stuff from TJ and uh, Andy Strong's good enough boxer to stay out of trouble. He was on the deck with Andy Devine when he fought at uh, the Royalty in Hoban in London, uh, but got back to win and then he easily won the return with Chris Devine. But this, he's really got to tuck the chin in those right handers. He may be showing them from the back of the hall, but some of them are just getting through. See, that's the way, Jim. He's got to settle down to the left jag now, Storm. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, careful for the first couple of rounds, I think, would be a good idea this afternoon. Just uh, stay out of distance. I think TJ seems a little bit stronger than Strong does up close. Yeah, so I think Strong will just probably try to keep it at long range as long as he can. Calm and collected there, Andy Strawn, and as I tell you, he needs to have a cool head about him with this fellow. So water only for TJ there, the normal gargle, of course. He's uh, 24, a couple of years younger, actually, than Strawn. Let's have a look at some replay of the one big punch coming in here now from uh, Jay, he's been thrown, there it is, but luck just got past the chin there, for, lucky for Strawn. Second so round advice from round three. The there. Into the third of this Cruiserweight Championship then, Gold Trunks, Andy Strawn, and TJ, from Ghana. So originally Barbados versus Ghana, but uh, they've been here a while, certainly Strong has, uh, from Hitchin in Hertfordshire, and TJ comes out of Battersea in London. <laughs> Get the impression, Jim, that most of the support here are from the Amateur club with TJ, and of course all the locals uh, with Strong now, but all sort of in the boxing business by the sound of the advice they're trying to give. Yeah, they're building up a nice little atmosphere. 
I think uh, Strong is going to have to try to discourage TJ a little bit. TJ is full of running. He's never been troubled by any of Strong's punches, and he's at all times he's looking to land big punches of his own. I think although Strong must be careful, I think he's going to have to put a bit of power into his own jab, or TJ is going to roll right over the top of him. Yeah, just at the end of the first minute of that round, he shot that right hand in there, Strong, to remind Jay he was still there. Tried it again there, so we've got to watch the right hand dropping down punch, as it were, a good straight right from Strong, and the, the bowling right hand from Jay. On the other hand, the left hook is also one to watch, Jim. I don't know why I'm dismissing that. Well, they're getting a bit obvious now. They're not only being telegraphed, there's a postcard going with those. So, then a minute to go in the third. And it's really warmed up into a good scrap this championship. See, they've already established it now, Jim, the respect both ways, the sparring for openings, a bit of pausing going on. Yeah, I think they're both looking for big punches now. TJ, since the, the start of the contest, he's only had one thing in his mind. There goes another big right hand followed by left hook. A little bit crude, uh, Strong could see them coming. But uh, they're each trying to get control of the fight now. Yeah, he's got to keep a, certainly a sharp eye there. You might be able to see them coming, Jim, but occasionally they must get through if he throws a knock on them. Count down then for the end of the round. No doubt in the corner there, Jim, they're saying, hey, you know, you've got to stop making those right hands obvious, eh? There's Dad. His name's Isola Akai, and he turns out some very tasty fighters indeed, uh, indeed from the All-Stars in London. Jim, have a look at this replay at the start of the round there. Yeah, well, there were some good punches there uh, in the first minute of the round. Yep, see Strong coming, dro dropping that little right hand down. But uh, nobody got the better of that exchange, but uh, some good punches from each. Looking very relaxed. Is that kind of character act, uh, Strong? There's a smile on his face, except when the bell rings. Into the fourth. 13 stone 8, remember the new introduced cruiserweight championship. Used to be a nickname uh, for the light heavyweights, as against dreadnoughts, meaning heavyweights. But they've actually, the Americans invented the, the fight. Oh, the left hook, we were, he slipped through the ropes there, and he's counted that as not a knockdown. Just went past the chin, Jim. Thank God the wind must have done it. But you'll notice uh, TJ wasn't hanging about. He was ready to pounce, and that was some good work from Sid Nathan there. There's quite a large apron to this ring. I'm surprised to have been underneath it like that. It's obviously they've called uh, in Jay's corner there to get the left hand working and the left hook working a bit more, Jim. He's, he doesn't seem to so right hand happy this round. Yeah, well, he's getting himself a little bit closer now. Strong has been trying to keep it a long range earlier on. But, uh, well, Strong's backing him up now. Well, getting all the carries that he wants from the crowd there, Strong. And he's cut around the left eye, TJ. Quite a bad one that could be, right in the corner. Now that must have been a punch, Jim, because they've hardly been in the clinch. Having said that, there they are now. But when the, the uh, cut happened, there was certainly no sign of clinching. 
Now, well, Strawn had just let go of a nice right hand which landed on target. But uh, this has certainly been the best round of the, the fight so far. They're both really going at it now. See, now Strawn can afford to take a few chances with the right hand. Not quite as accurate there. He's, he knows he's got to lay in the whole time now. Question of stamina, probably, Jim. We're not sure about TJ, but I'll tell you what, he looks durable enough. He looks as though he could fight all night, barring injury. Yeah, he looks strong. I, th I think Strong has adopted the, the right tactics, nice and careful in the first few rounds, and now he's trying to back G up and uh, sending over his own right hand, which is troubling G a little bit. So the countdown for the end of the round and certainly Jay will be pleased to get back to the stall so that the, the seconds can work on that cut eye with the coagulates. So right away of course at the moment he sat down there Tony Lavelle's uh, got the adrenaline one in a thousand that's inspected by incidentally by border control inspectors and medical men making sure that uh, nothing illegal is used, but it's very rare it happens in British boxing anyway. A lot of pressure got to be applied there, Jim. This is, as you've often said before, he doesn't quite know the extent of the injury. Everybody else does. And Sid Nathan just leaned over there, the referee, and had a look. So let's have a look at some replay there. We, we might see where perhaps the punches came look, through there. Could have been not quite high enough, I don't think. But that was... Oh, the quarter heads there Take together. That may well have Round happened at that five. point, Jim. Who knows? I doubt it. Round five. So a little bit of desperation, I would have thought, in the, upon AMTJ's fighting. And it uh, looks it, doesn't it, at the start of the fifth. advice uh, Andy Strong getting from his old flatmate and running mate Errol Christie uh, of course he's got other things on his mind finding Sean Mannion at uh, Alexander Pavilion next Wednesday Apparently the corner men are saying that the, the cut's not too bad, they can cope with it okay. But uh, if it worsens, well, that's another story and of course a long way to go yet. He's being nice and composed though, Spawn Jim, I must say that. He's, he's not going crazy now, he probably fake figures he can win. Yeah, well, well, I noticed in the previous round, it was in the second part of the round that Strong started to take over, so maybe that's his plan. Box the first half of the round and they start trying some big right hands later on in the round. But uh, the fourth round was the best of the fight so far, and Strong certainly had the better of things. Had American experience, uh, Andy Strong, but I don't think he wants to know too much about that. He lost a couple of fights there in Detroit back in 84, but he was 12 and a half stone those days, and he's gone up to 13, five and a half now, so I think he needed to go up a bit. He didn't like dragging himself minute to go in the round. Just catches the tip of the right hand glove at times, Jim J, doesn't he? Doesn't quite turn that in, just as well as yeah. gone. If, if I was looking after G, I would suggest uh, he's had never had any success with single punches. If he throws three and four punches, he, he normally gets through with the last couple of left hooks. So I think I would send him out to, 
to put his punches together. If he throws them in ones at the straw and the straw is that just a little bit too sharp, he can keep himself out of trouble. back to the corner after even five rounds of the pace like this the punches have been fairly strong so as you see after each round they have to apply that pressure in the TJ's corner so the experience comes in with good seconds many a fight's been won and lost in the corner believe me it looks like they've done that quite well Jim really to keep that under control yeah, I don't think the cut was too serious. Uh, once they wiped the blood away, there's very little there. So hopefully it'll remain like that. So the manager, I tell you, earning his uh, percentage worth there. Got a lot of criticisms managers and boxing writers like to do that, but, you know, show business agents don't have to perform. At least these fellas have to work. So into round six scheduled for 12 this championship fight cruiserweight division 13-8 and it's for the vacant championship given up by TJ stablemate Sonny Reese in the Patterson Surprisingly, the Storm's walking that way, Jim, clockwise, more or less on to uh, the right hand. Yeah, well, I, I think he feels that uh, Jay signals his right hand. You can see it coming in plenty of time. The danger has been from the left hook. Any good punches he's, he's been landing has been from the left hook. So maybe Storm's quite happy to walk towards the right hand because he sees it coming. Well, if you listen to the commentary, we can practically tell him it's on its way, really. That's how far back it is. Yeah, they're putting the punches together well now. Standing ground, more or less toe-to-toe. -to -toe. As I said earlier, not uh, so long ago, these would have been uh, considered full heavyweights at uh, 13, 7, 13, 5 and a half. So the fighters have got bigger and uh, good for them. The purse money has too. Sid Nathan managing to do a good job here. Nice, quite efficient job, Jim. Yeah, good experienced referee and... Uh, the fight has been well fought, we haven't been clinching or holding on to each other too often. No judges, of course, in British title fights, so the referee, sole charge, telling him uh, to keep the head up there, TJ. A little bit worried about a bit of button going on, I hope not, but uh, he's nagging Jay a bit now. Well, they heard that uh, right hand bang from the back of the hall there. And it looks as though it's taken his toll there with Jay Jim. He's just slowing that book down as we get the countdown to the end of the round. Yeah, well, I think it's all been strong punches that Jay's been throwing, taking, obviously taking a lot of energy out of him. And Strawn looks to be lasting the pace a little bit better at this stage. So there's uh, nobody's got time really to look at uh, Miss Victoria there from the sponsors properly script because they've got other things on their mind at this moment. And 
the replay there. There it is, you see. He's, start, he's starting to back off uh, TJ. Just, I thought, floundering occasionally there, especially when he got warned by the referee. Uh, and that was one of the right-hand punches that the crowd liked. I'm not so sure Jay did. Second down. Round seven. Seventh. Yeah, it's been a really hard slog. I would have thought now Andy Storm's just that bit in front now, Jim. Yeah, well, Jay started the, the sixth round very well, but it seemed to tire a little bit towards the end. And that, that's usually a sign uh, when a fighter takes over at the end of a round, it's usually a sign he's in a better condition. And Strawn is putting a bit more thought into his boxing and he's pacing himself a little bit better, I think. Well, it could be the last furlongs of the fight, as it were, could decide it, but I would have thought this slightly cleaner boxing and punching by, uh, by Strong was put in my head. But, uh, you know, Sid Nathan's had us guessing a few times in the past, perhaps he will this time. Now, that's the left hook you were mentioning early on, Jim. It's, he uses that a lot better than the right hand. I don't know why he doesn't try it a bit more. A bit quiet here, Storm, uh, taking the punches as Jay walks in there. He's the one that wants to throw them. Can't afford a rest, Storm, can he, Jim? Yeah, definitely. Well, they landed a nice right hand here, but it seems to have troubled Jay a little bit. That was a good right hand from Storm. Well, I hope he heard, but he certainly livened up then, didn't he? One or two, I suspect, distress signals there from Jay. Just as I can stand and trade with the old night is as tough as old boots, there's no doubt about that. But uh, there's a sort of expression on the face, Jim, that is saying, what am I going to do about this, don't you think? Yeah, he was in a bit of trouble there. I think he's got himself back together now, throwing good punches of his own. But he was certainly in a little bit of trouble there. We've seen Andy Storm in long distance fight, but uh, not Jay yet, so we're not quite sure what's going to happen here. Sometimes these uh, muscular looking fellows really do run out of strength. Uh, in a contest, they get a little bit muscle bound. I'm not saying it will happen here with TJ, by the way, but uh, I've seen him over the years, it often happens. Good rounders. for work there. And any doubts that I had about his stamina now have been written off, I must say. He looks as though he could stay all night, and this is the longest he's been. You know, the pro ring, well, obviously the amateurs as well, but uh, in his first big championship fight with Southern Area, he won before. And that was in the fourth round against Gypsy Carmen at Norwich. Unusual, really, hold some near a championship there. Well, the crowd will or some of them anyway are encouraging Andy Storm to box a bit more, get the left hand scoring, but he's not really doing that with any great authority. Strong's work rate over the last couple of rounds hasn't been very high. It just clips him with the right hand, uh, Jim, when either of us are saying something about Strong, he just reminds us that he's still very much in there with the right hand punches. Get 
the impression, John, that any kind of punch that TJ throws, if it lands on the forearm or the shoulders, could still be a hurtful blow. Just immensely strong, isn't he? Yeah, I think they're both feeling the pace a little bit now. But uh, TJ still looking strong, still getting the power into the punches. Quite honestly, Jim, I had no idea what kind of fight this would be, and they made it, but uh, it's a lot better than I, in my heart of thought. Yeah, well, it's been action all the way through, and Jay's keeping it close. Here he comes back again now. I mean, I feel that Strong, Strong's work rate has dropped a little bit over the last couple of rounds, which is get, getting TJ back into the fight again. Another two right hand clip reminders by Spawn. Eye catching both for TJ and the referee scorecard. So the bell land the ref TJ seconds almost catapulting into the ring there. So right to the end they've had to work with these uh, adrenaline swabs. And uh, certainly it, it hasn't worsened too much. He's, he's done well, Tony Lavelle, to keep that under control. He's boxed all over the place, actually, TJ. Basildon and Merton and Wandsworth in London, Stoke and Norwich. So he's had to do it the hard way if he can win this championship. Mind you, Strawn has knocked about a bit in his uh, professional career, I must say. We've seen him all over the place now. and uh, he got two draws, Ian Lazarus and Antonio Harris. Uh, Long-distance draws, but the, the good round win over round Tom Collins 11. was worth remembering. <laughs> round 11, and uh, almost before the bell dies away there. Throws a left hook again, TJ. Looks as though it's going to be... A real hard finish. It's been hard all through, Jim, but I think they've got to give it all they've got in the last couple. Yeah, well, there's some signs in the midway stage that, that Strong is going to take over, but that hasn't happened. Jay's come straight back at him again, and the last three rounds have been very close. They could have gone either way. Strong a little bit more cultured, but uh, TJ prepared to do more work. I think the Andy, Andy chants are being mixed a little bit with a little contingent there of TJ supporters. There's one enthusiastic character around TJ's corner saying, come on TJ, you've got him, but... I think that's a slight exaggeration, Jim, as all often happens with the ringside punters. So the referee now has just got to work inside, pushing them apart more than he's had to uh, in previous rounds. Midway through 11th, and it's a 12-rounder. Oh, good combination there by Jay. I said the right hand and left hand almost pivot fashion. He must be a very discouraging man to fight, TJ. And, uh, we, ne we nearly had a half a sensation there. I think Sid Nathan takes a punch well, though. Amanda Holyfield, a bit special, is now the world cruiserweight champion, or one of the three anyway, who defeated TJ in the Los Angeles Olympics. Right. 
Referee scores after each round with a, a plus quarter or a plus half mark at uh, the side so that he hasn't got to add up the score at the end. He's got all the pluses done. And I tell you, all that hard training that these fellas have to put in now, this is where it all counts and they're worth it, every penny of what they're getting. Pleased with his night's uh, afternoon's work, I should say there, TJ. So there's referee Sid Nathan, now lives in Boar and Wood in Hertfordshire, doing his homework, as I say, adding the, the pluses so that uh, he should know by the last round where his card stands. And though the referees who dwell a bit at the end, I often think, are being a little bit theatrical. So with three councillors in the corner now, if he can just fight like Ernie Fossey now. <laughs> coming out for the last, but it's always easy when the bell goes and they get out of the ring. Seconds out, 12, and last round. There he is, final round then, and TJ again, fast off the mark. No knockdowns in this championship fight, but uh, it's given us everything else. Real grit, determination, some solid punching, some good boxing. And uh, the old thing about one man trying to impose his will on the other the whole way through. Stand out a good fight, Jim. Yeah, it's turned out a cracker. There's been action all the way through. And uh, as I said, I thought maybe Strong was going to take over. I thought he'd better condition than TJ, but I think maybe it's turning out quite the opposite. TJ's the one in the last round here who's still trying to force it forward. He's a real tank of a fighter, isn't he? It's a long time since we can see Strong's had a good round. He's always been in it, and so is TJ, but uh, they not only had a good round. So, two minutes to go, then. back on his heels again there, a bit small. I think he's been a bit frustrated that uh, his really best punches haven't put Jay down. I seem to have stunned him a few times, or I suppose all good punches would, but uh, he's always been able to recover. Very good uh, recuperative powers. Well, you very seldom get a draw in a championship fight. It does happen, and I'm wondering now whether we could get that kind of turn up, Jim, or would you lean now with TJ? Yeah, I'm just trying to work it out in my mind now. Strong was ahead in the other part of the fight, in my mind anyway. But uh, being that he hasn't had a good round for quite some time, it's definitely got a lot closer. I don't know, maybe, maybe if Strong's better boxing has kept him in front slightly. But uh, very, very difficult one, very, very close. Well, let's see if old Sid will sort out a winner. Somebody banging on the canvas there, but I suppose he'd liven both fighters up doing that. So there's the countdown then. as I thought was a strong finish by both of them and they're entitled to hang on by now. <laughs> so they're going over there and he's gone there and he's given it to Strong. Strong walked to him as if to say, I've won it, I've boxed well enough. And we'll find out whether it was a close one uh, on the referee scoring. Uh, Jim Watton, I thought it was. But it was a difficult one to judge. Uh, Andy Spawn's better boxing early on has carried him through. But a very strong performance indeed by TJ of Ghana. So John Morris, the uh, 
Secretary of the Boxing Board of Control is uh, carrying the, the Lonsdale belt in and uh, John Handler our gentlemen, the please. The boxing board will present it. Ladies and gentlemen, lots of colours as you would expect. The contest: J, 117 points. Strong, 117 points. That's manager Bert McCarthy there. He doesn't work the corner actually. This the winner, He's won it the by one round, Andy Strong. So uh, Jim Watt and I really were Strong. quite right about that scoring, but it had to be a close one. A one round margin you can't obviously can't get any closer than that